It's just a solid pick right now. One time I'll give it to you, okay? <laughs> One time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, speaking of heroes that you're praising, you, you've actually liked the Spirit Breaker. When are we gonna see that? And <sighs> it's so... It's never gonna come, man. It's really? So, it's, so, it's, so, it's so sad to see. I think maybe... I think Secret played it... Uh, maybe two weeks ago. I'm gonna pull that one out of the air. I'm just hoping they played it. Um, <laughs> But no, I think, yeah, Spirit Breaker might one day come back to our great screens. It is a very strong hero at fighting. It loves to fight post laning phase. The issue just simply is converting the, the first five minutes into then having just the right items to take the next fight. It's kind of hard to get him that space, but one day I'll get my cow in the game. I, I, feel, I feel like I really want to see this because I want his insight on the hero mm. and not just every night you see him mooing, right? He's playing the Spirit Breaker every charge. He says, moo, and then you hear him at 2 a.m. in the morning. I really want to sleep and if, if, I'm, if I'm at least being up all night, I want some good insight on the hero that's being picked. Does the lulling of a moo not go put you to sleep? You know, some people listen to like raindrops or something. I just listen to just a paddy field of cows just mooing away. You're not the cow. <laughs> I can embody one. It's what, it what soothes his mind, helps him go to sleep. But I do feel sorry for you. So you're gaming at some normal hours by the looks of it. I and mean, he's gaming till stupid o'clock in the morning, keeping you awake. Yeah. My friends are in England, man. There's that two hour gap. Gotta, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That I understand then, and I'm never going to be complaining about And I'll stop mooing, that. okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. How no. loud are you mooing to keep him awake? <sighs> Not loud enough, I guess. Um, <laughs> right. Anyway, more importantly, we've got a sky pick. Actually, that's um, that's an interesting one. I feel like that. It really boils down to the idea of they want to fight. They want to be able to go. It deconstructs the idea that they're going to be able to play outside of fighting. If the game slows down mm -hmm. and the game moves towards like push out your waves and they're holding the high ground, this lineup it does have weaknesses. Of course, they still have two picks to go. But it's, it's how well-rounded Team Spirit have right now. They have the, the Necro to stand in the front line. He's always going to be susceptible to dying because you have the Ember with Vessel and a Skyroth. Love playing against Necro. It's just the fact that they have this Earth Spirit and Bristleback as well. A lot of answers that you have to deal with and potentially too tanky for VP to, to get through. I agree on that, definitely. This third spirit seems really strong. All three of these heroes really hate the silence. They hate the uh, constant damage. Like, he's going to survive some of these spells. Uh, in the beginning, at least gets one or two uh, reappliances of his ulti. So, and actually, if you slow these heroes, they're gonna die. But there is the answer actually. The magnetize comes out, the ulti from the coddle comes out. You just use Tempede, you get out and you re engage. So, maybe that's the way that uh, VP Prodigy plays this. They still lack a lot of damage. Like, they got a lot of like poke in terms of like they got Ember and then Witch, not so sure of mana dip, but they don't really have that guy who's like that innate big damage dealer. Sure, we can say Sky can do that, but Sky, he falls off pretty quickly in terms of you get that early pipe, maybe a couple of braces on a couple of heroes, and then suddenly it's like, well, sure, you're a Sky. If you look at us, we'll just flick you back out of the game and we'll see. They've still got, they got, they have the ability to, the, it's December, right? This is why it's so strong. You can flex it between mid and carry and they have last pick. So that's the most critical thing for VP to, uh, to abuse right now. Bracers don't give magic resistance anymore. They do. They do? Mm-hmm. Okay, strength, strength that doesn't yes, give correct. magic that's resistance. That's why they okay. need the bracers okay, to yeah, mitigate okay, that, yeah. Okay, okay. That, that's, that's okay then. So what missing components have we got here for both sides? What are we looking for? Team Spirit needs a, I think, a playmaker that can, like a, just a, like a quap type hero that, I don't know if quap's banned, no it's not, but yeah, any int-based mid hero that can make moves around the map and just control VP. VP, when they approach a tower, they don't really do damage to it. So if you okay. have this mid laner that can just jump them and go, all right, cool, you're here, but we're just going to rip you to pieces. Yeah. You think this Necro is not going to go mid? I've just, I just feel like the offlane Necro provides more value than the mid. Maybe if maybe you pick a flexible hero that can go mid or offlane, and then you can flex that Necro, so then you're not too punished by this Ember pick. Because of course, Necro v Ember will be a Necro favored matchup. Yeah, because I'm not sure how the Necro plus the Earth Spirit are going to do in a, in a matchup against the Witch Doctor. The other thing you could do is just pick like a casual Monkey King, for example. You put him mid, put the Necro off lane, and then you force the Ember into a bad lane no matter what. And then you don't care if the mid lane is countered. It's just the fact that you're going to pretty much remove the Ember, and Ember has to have a good start to be the one starting the fights. Because Centaur early on doesn't start fights. So if Ember can, then VP are in a good, good position to like, set the tempo of the game. Yeah, I'd like to see something on t Team Spirit that actually can start a fight. That I've also completely lied to you, by the way. <laughs> VP don't have last pick. 
Oh. I won't lie, I'm going to blame this iPad that's not working. Ah, uh, okay, there you and go. Good I can't excuse. really see the screen, so I'm clutching here, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Eyesight's gone, iPad's gone, you just yeah. running through the dark. I've just got access just to anything I want on the internet, really. Um, I can just, uh, you know, I'll just... Except what you need. <laughs> they I won't turn the, the iPad around, don't worry. They banned the Brood, so mm -hmm. Ember doesn't do too bad against the Brood mm -hmm. in the lane, but still, it's not something you would want to. But do we now feel like they're gonna get something that's actually bad against the Broodmother? Maybe you... Okay, there's the Razor. It's definitely bad against Broodmother. But that's, a, that's a pretty solid pick. It's the fact that they don't have last pick, so let's revert what I said, all right? Because they don't have last pick, <laughs> they need to enable the Ember in some way through their draft. So they pick up the Razor. Now you can put both of them in either position one or position two. Therefore, if you counter the Ember, Razor naturally counters the hero that count Ember. They've covered themselves quite nicely. And it, it does round out their ability to take fights. Razor's the guy that stands in front of the fight. Centaur is your initiator with the Blink Dagger. Mm -hmm. And then Ember can always catch the back lines. So they have a nice formation for team fights. It's just, do they really have a lot of damage to eat through the tankiness of a Bristleback and a Necro once they hit that sweet spot of one, two tanky items? Well, they can take the fights now, but it's still going to be pretty scary on the side of VP. Yeah, if uh, if... If Spirit are able to get to their early items, yeah. then VP will, will struggle. But if they don't ever reduce that kind of the gas, the momentum, then it could be very hard for Spirit. I think VP Prodigy might be baiting them to pick a Queen of Pain here, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. Queen of Pain is really squishy. If she gets stunned by the Centaur, she just dies, mm -hmm. right? And then you're like, okay, this Queen of Pain, she's going to destroy the lane, but then in the mid game, she's just going to die. So it might be actually a bait pick for her. The issue I feel, see with that though, simply the Cop will have a good lane no matter what, because yeah. it's either against Razor or Ember, and you love playing Cop into those two heroes. So you pick a Queen here. I, I, if I was Spirit, I probably would actually pick Queen. I mentioned it earlier that they Spirit need that playmaking hero. I think, oh, they Lina. go for Lina. Ooh. I think Team Spirit is one of the few teams that actually opt to pick this hero. I think Last the only time it came in as well. Yeah, the only other team that picked, I believe, was Alliance. Again, I'm pulling that one out of thin air, lads. <laughs> Um, don't don't go. A lot of guesswork going on here, isn't there? Yeah, it's like I've, there's been so many games. I just can't put two and two together at this point. But no, uh, Lena, solid hero. It's the same kind of idea of a quap where it's going to win the matchup against Razor or Ember. It provides a nice little bit, bit of D push. If you have the Bristleback or Necro standing in front of your tower, Lena naturally can push out the waves as well. So it's good tower defense. I'm um, ending this one out. I think Team Spirit have a, a nice well-rounded draft, and I think they will take this first game. I actually like the Inspirit as well. Like mm. VP Prodigy, you said that they have poke and stuff, but I don't see this Sky and this Witch Doctor doing a lot when actually the Bristle is going to be the only one in front, right? Mm. And the other one is going to be in the back. And if you jump the Lina, you always have the Cottle to somehow defend it, and you have the Earth Spirit to counter initiate, which this hero really likes to do. So I'm also leaning a little bit to Spirit when it comes to the draft. Okay, so you guys are siding with Spirit off this draft. We've got Shiva and Trent standing by. And first thing we've got to say is, Shiva, you're, you're back on commentary, but also you had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday for yesterday. Thank you. Yeah, I had a great birthday staying at home, you know, just like <laughs> other years. But this time we had to stay at home. So there's that. Uh, it was but yeah, this is going to be a great, great Dota. series, I think. Yeah, I'm so ready for this Dota. And I'm sure that Trent is as well as we're hopping straight into it. And the panel didn't really seem too confident in a VP Prodigy's lineup. Trend, what do you think? There's not a lot of confidence going either way, I feel like. I'm leaning a little towards Spirit, I heard they said. But, uh, yeah, um, near, near the end, I, I kind of like that idea of, like, the bristle uh, being in front. And I can see how they'll make the team fights very difficult with, like, all this um, side counter initiation between the Coddle and the shit, the, um, the Earth Spirit. But the whole part of that is the the start of the game for the bristle. Uh, very much like these, these timber saws where some games it looks absolutely incredible and then other games you're just like, wow, this hero feels kind of worthless. So I, I'm going to be watching for those uh, neutral camp stacks. I think Yay. this one. That's exciting. Sounds super exciting. Watching all the neutral camp stack. Well, wow. what I can tell you is that, you know, the panel leans towards spirit and I get that because we have seen Aragon play Lina and I am not a fan of a mid Lina. Mm-hmm. Unless he plays it. Or rather, I, he is the only one that I've watched it play recently that it actually worked out. Like, yeah, he's able exactly, to set that right? tempo. I think like 90% of teams would have picked Queen of Pain there. Even if yeah. it's the obvious pick, it's still, you know, it's that pick versus Razor for a reason. But they just played this matchup versus um, versus uh, Bait, and he, he took down Denny. I mean, again, it's a like good matchup for the Lena stuff. But the main problem with Lena right now and why a lot of teams don't like her is that her ability to rotate is just like 
it's just not as good as all these other heroes that are in the meta right now. True. Like, y you can't ah. screw up. It's a lot harder to execute. Ah. Sometimes she needs that little bit of a setup. You compare it to, like, an ember out of the mid lane or something, and it's just much easier to move across the map and, like, get your snowball rolling for the team. So you're feeling like Team Spirit's lineup is a little bit <laughs> higher really? execution needed compared to the lineup of VP Prodigy? Uh, yeah, I'd say that's fair to say. It's, uh, like, not only just, like, execution in the team fights, but also, uh, like, this whole first 15 minutes to me looks very spooky of, like, trying to get the right stacks ready for my bristle without the invasion coming through. Like, Witch Doctor and Skywrath Mage, one thing that they're both very good at is uh, the second they hit six, they just want to kill someone. And uh, that, that could be, like, either of these supports with any other core, but these two supports together could, like, smoke up and get a double kill, pretty much. So Is there anybody I, that can't I, kill? <laughs> I, it's a pretty deadly game uh, from both sides. Yeah. Maybe the Earth Spirit, right? You probably don't want to run to him. Maledict is pretty uh, pretty good for those beefier heroes, so maybe even Earth Spirit will go down. Uh, if, if they run to Bristle doing stacks, he'll probably still die at that point in the game, too. So I, I would just be very uh, wary of this early aggression from the VP Prodigy heroes. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting how it is going to go down. How would you like to see it laned? Uh, well, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I wanted the Mid-Earth Spirit. It's what I wanted. <laughs> well. <laughs> I've seen Aragorn, you know. <laughs> I've seen him messing around. That's pretty, like, how great is it that you have, like, the number one Earth Spirit player, at least currently, it feels like Immersion's, like, the big player. Yeah. And then you have this guy who's willing to play at core. Like, that's awesome. I, he plays what, what everything you ask for but the drafting? traditional ones. <laughs> yeah, right? true. Profit mid. He does it all. He does it all. Apart uh, from I think the lane should just be pretty, pretty set. Uh, the, I guess the only question will be: Is the bristle going top or bottom? Like some teams like to try and like secure safe lane farm in the top lane, but I think with the the way the heroes are set, <laughs> wow! I like this drawing here that they're <laughs> going for Duracho. That's uh, the farming pattern, I think, for uh, for Duracho. Mm. Oh, he's drawing now birds. They're birds, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, That's but indeed, beautiful. he'll just be going bottom. But we have um, we have pairings, right? We have Skyrath and Centaur, a very famous laning duo, and we have Coddle and Bristle, another uh, lovely pair that they like to stick it out together. And then we have the uh, the Necrophos versus the Ember, which is this classic uh, counterpick for the mid lane, where the Necrophos just absolutely dumpsters the Ember Spirit, and makes his game super sad. Yeah, Misha is already on his way to the bottom lane. For some reason, and I don't know why, but I only see all the Radiant things on the minimap. It's very oh, confusing. That's, that's good. Did you press F1? Um, maybe. Gotta check all those hotkeys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm new to this, okay? I might have pressed all the buttons in the wrong order. Uh, yeah, that was this. I see everything now. I feel empowered. Excellent. I feel empowered. Are we going to have some uh, some um, a rune action, or is everybody just happy getting theirs? I mean, afterlife up top will just be happy if he gets one. Just like, please don't come up here and see him one hero. <laughs> and it looks like they're not going to bother invading. So yeah, I think it's going to be boring runes. But if you're bottom, you're definitely going in, right? You got bristle. Let's go. You have to. And they are, and they are. But at the same time, save has got a lot of mana to uh, to use. And even though, he, I mean, he's going for concussive shot first, as that is the uh, the thing to do. Still quite annoying. Oh, thanks for the stick charges, dude. Yeah, keep keep doing me. Look, he wants oh. more. He's not even going to run away. I it's mean, like, I would die. <laughs> get all those stacks out. You can endlessly spam your abilities. All right. Well, looks like we had a fairly even uh, a rune distribution. Actually, is there still a rune there? There is. Okay. Yeah, they end up chasing him out, I think, up top, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Still two for two, though. And uh, we do have the bristle back on the safe lane at the moment, laying together with the Caudal. And uh, Immersion is here together with Old Afterlife against Epileptic Kit and Ein. Yeah, so he's got the Orb of Venom to start. Uh, he's going to look to see what the camp situation is, and his sentry will cast the one blocking his higher camps. That's big for the Necro, but he's being gone on. Oh, that's such free harass. That's like nothing. <laughs> Just one Bola and a cask. Yeah. Oh, and he lost his courier too? Oh, his little yep. mushroom guy was coming up. I, I love that from Team Spirit. They all have the mushrooms. Oh, no, that's Slacks. Oh. And that's Slacks. I mean, that <laughs> deserved that. Let's be real. Ooh, Ayn is actually taking quite the beating here. He does throw out a cask, bounces around a little bit, gives him a safe escape. But he's got to be careful there. The continuous punching is uh, annoying to deal with, and it does burn him through uh, his salve. A little more region down the drain. 
Well, looks Where like a pretty similar action. Out? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the big question because the same thing is kind of happening down bottom. There's uh, some spam coming out from the Skyrath. A little bit of the Coddle trying to hold them back with the light. I, I'm going to guess it's probably going to be the Witch Doctor. It's either going to be the Witch yeah. Doctor or the Earth Spirit because Immersion's going to make the call of, all right, I'm going in, and he's either going to kill the Witch Doctor first or he's going to die for it. At least I think that if Witch Doctor dies, Epileptic Kid will be able to clean up. Like, well, there's going to be trade either way, right? You think? Yeah. And he, he's cleaning up that camp. So this was unblocked by the Radiant. And then Dyer were just like, yeah, okay, we, we confirm this. Sounds yeah. all right. Might as well. And they block it for future use. No longer there either. In the meantime, the uh, harassment battle continues on a bottom, la bottom lane. And I think this is just a great lane for Skyrath to have a stick in. It's yeah, like, it really sure, that Racho has got a cottle that gives him mana constantly. But I feel like Save has got like the same kind of effect with that stick, with the stick Sky, that he can build it, up. It's just so fast, and they don't have like a slow to like threaten the Skyrath Mage, right? So you can just permanently play around the range of goo, and that that's kind of like how do you die in this lane as Skyrath Mage? I guess you overcommit is the answer. Yeah, if you get close to a kill, like the typical way where a Bristleback gets kills early on, right? Oh, the casket throws out top, but it doesn't bounce around, so. Unlucky for uh, for Ayn. Yeah, that was really close. Yeah, I thought it would hit. Still on the uh, immersion. Ooh. Bottom lane I again. I mean, it's just it's just harass and exchanging of uh, of regen, if you will. In the meantime, in the middle lane, haven't really talked about that one yet because that one should be nobody should die, and both are having a decent lane. Both are sitting on 15, 14 last hits, and FN is getting a little bullied here. And the Aircon doesn't have enough mana to uh, to pursue that, but I mean it, that should be a stable lane. Yeah, level six, right? We're always gonna look for that rotation from the Earth Spirit to try and get a kill with the Laguna Blade, but they're also gonna be looking for that VP Prodigy. Uh, I think the wow. way that these lanes are staying so static, this seems like it's uh, pretty good actually for VP Prodigy because I feel like the Radiant again are just way more reliant on stacks, and there's no time for anyone to go make stacks for this Bristle right now. No, oh, that's true. It, it, and that's what you mentioned at the start, like you wanted to see those stacks come out. I mean, as uh, not exciting as it sounded, looking at those stacks and getting those stacks up for the Bristleback is super important, but Immersion is being kept top. Uh, we have Misha being kept bottom. And actually, even for for an Earth Spirit, normally you want to rotate around, right? And he can't even do that. No, he's uh, maybe able to get something going here, though. Save himself. Oh, he's, he's so dead. <laughs> Very dead. First blood on the board. Epileptic kid running away from Afterlife. Taking quite a beating. Has got, uh, well, some stick charges. Only two, but every little bit matters. In the meantime, bottom lane, the Racho will be dropping here as well. Misha only left to secure the rune for a second. Comes back just to find his, his uh, bristle bag, is safe lane bristle dead. Damn, there's instant double tips. Yeah, this is good laning synergy, making sure you're tipping the dead guy together. Really assert your dominance here. This is your strategy, right? Is the asserting dominance in the laning stage, no matter yes. what you think the matchup's like, just assert dominance, assert try and make dominant. them afraid. If you're the one dictating the movement and the tempo, it doesn't matter if it is in the game, like macro on the game, or if it's just in the lane, you're the one controlling how well. Uh, the lane's going, so Azure Dominance, super important. That's, uh, that's where all thing. those victories come from. <laughs> yes, same thing as for the uh, for the runes. Uh, we have Team Spirit being uh, a little bit more successful there on the runes. Oh, Ein uh, will fall, came a little bit too close and just wanted to see if he could get a rune, and he couldn't. And with that kill, like, that's a really good window for Immersion to, like, he's the choice now, right? Do I try and go for the skill on Epileptic Kid, which is hard, or do I run mid? Because my Lena's just about to be six. We're, we're on that wave at, like, five and a half minutes. I mean, so, I was impressed nice by moment. that slide of fist dodge, not gonna, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. I kind of brushed that over. That was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, like, very quick. And then the slide of fist was, like, super short, but it was enough to uh, make sure that Immersion missed that and basically... Make sure that uh, that he lives there uh, on the Ember Spirit. We have uh, the wave being cut on the bottom lane so that the Bristles may be having to farm on the tower. I think he's going to be fine with that. Um, is, is a Coddle able to stop the lane from being cut? Why? Yeah, why are they doing this? Well, why do you care if it's being cut? Because now this frees the Coddle. Because now he can stack the Ancients and the Bristle still gets all the same farm. Yeah. Ooh, sure. FN! Mid lane activity! You can drain Aragorn all you want, but that magic damage is still going to hurt. That wasn't too bright indeed. 
So no supports needed. They had that defensive ward too, so they were kind of committing to try and make sure that uh, FM will be fine in the mid, but just loses the straight yeah. 1v1. Oh, a roll can't dodge that one, Epileptic Kid, but it doesn't do the thing that Immersion wanted it to do. Save teleported to the top to help out his top lane, and they do get the kill on Afterlife. Sure, Immersion's able to teleport out, but that, uh, that hurts. Uh, what we heard mm -hmm. earlier from um, from the panel was that, you know, these uh, from you as well, actually, like these early stages are really important to see if Spirit can get like their, their first items up and how they are going to survive uh, the laning stage and stuff. How do you feel it's going so far? Because it's fairly even, but who does that benefit? Well, they've gotten a lot of space now with the way that like the uh, the Skyrath got forced to TP top and the center set of creeps cutting, uh, cutting. So now you suddenly have a triple stack of Ancients here, ready for your bristle. And he's he's closing on Vanguard, right? He's, he's making his way. So uh, yeah, all, all's good. You, I mean, you also got the 1v1 kill in the mid lane, right? Which is obviously going to help a lot for this Lena's rotations to, uh, to start off. Yep, mango trees. All right, Trent, you've got a Coddle mm. in the game, but you also have a bristle back. Are you a base planter? Or are you not a base planter in this scenario? Uh, I have generally favor the base plant. Uh, do I have any good vision on the dire side? Not really. Maybe you could get away with like a sneaky ward. I, I just like having all the mana, man. I, I don't know. It's not really worth it. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not the base risky planter take. as well. Woo, immersion! He tried to roll away, but uh, can't do that. Great movements from a VP Prodigy as they also are able to take out Flesh. the peskier spirit. And uh, immersion is having a rough game. He was gathering information. He's like, well, they're either ganking mid or they're still up here somewhere. Turned out they were still up there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll <Yay>. go with that. <laughs> uh, and Erga getting forced to teleport out. Uh, we do oh, have... Here we uh, go. This is sneaky. Yeah, they, they want they want FN. They need FN. <laughs> Courier was not sneaky. What? Where was that? I don't going? know why it was there. <laughs> what on that earth? Was That's, that was Bristleback's Courier. What? Yes. That was his ring of health. Is that right, show? River. Oh, I know how that happens. You sent the courier with your hotkeys to pick up your ring of health from the secret shop, right? And yeah. then you send it back, and then it takes the stupidest route because it can't fly yet. What? No, it does not it because he can fly. Well, then I don't know. Yeah, I got Team nothing. Spirit, they got five heroes sitting in this middle lane. They want to brawl, they want to fight, they find a vent, but it looks like we also have VP Prodigy wanting to fight. They stampede in. A lot of damage being done to Aragon. And it will not save him. He dies. Uh, they did get a nice Laguna Blade out. Like, it's a one for one trait. I find that still in favor of VP Prodigy. They had less people there, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much the best way to count it at that point. Yeah. Now we're, we're closing on the outpost, too. So uh, they have regained the top one after Immersion's death. Mm -hmm. And the bottom one should be controlled by Team Spirit as well. So. We have 30 seconds to figure something out who you be, Prodigy. You do not want to lose these outputs. It looks like no one's going to rotate top, so Ein's fine. He'll just be able to handle this back for the team. Yeah. A nice uh, one versus one split. We see a lot of teams put a lot of effort into, um, well, shutting down the enemy outpost, if you will, or at least, you know, making sure you control it yourself. How important do you feel like that is, especially the 10 minute one? Uh, the 10-minute one, I feel like, is like the big one. Especially is like, I feel like support players probably feel it the most because one of you wants the tome, right? And yep. if you don't get that 150, it, it feels even more like oh. awful if you don't get it. Afterlife, yeah. he's oh. already got oh. the curse on. He still had a lot of stick charges. He gets himself up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to save his life. Killing spree for the Witch Doctor. That was before Sky Ult, too. Mm -hmm. I can just like take down one of the harder heroes to kill. Yeah. I mean, that was obviously tag team, including the Ember Spirit, like Epileptic Kid coming in with that gank. Uh, but it's just a little bit of a taste of what could come from VP Prodigy. They have so much burst. They still have the ulti here from Ayn as well. So if Ergon's not careful, or if they like try this dive from Immersion or something, you can turn around just because you have Maledict. And Sky's here. Bristle's fairly close by, but it looks like Team Spirit kind of want to fight. Look at Immersion just sitting on the sidelines, having that Invis rune. Yeah, they're holding the Coddle ult too, so like they, they yeah. can't really commit on the Aragon or else they'll just get willowed. Mm -hmm. Oh, Life Strike away <laughs> misses. A little bit unfortunate there. The Bristleback thinking he's invincible, baits everybody out. Nice Will O Wisp indeed, but the Stampede will make sure everybody is home. Safe, all clear. Afterlife still taking quite a beating, but it looks like Immersion is the only one to die here from saves.
bolts. Oh my god, that was like the luckiest cask. Uh, maybe he tired of the Lena, but all I saw was a cask <laughs> bounce hit on the Ergon when he was going for the two man stun following that Will O Wisp. So that was very well done by Ayn. We'll just give him the credit, however it happened. Yeah. I mean, his positioning was good. I always feel like when you're a Witch Doctor and you are playing against a Caudal, you have to be very careful not to be stuck in the Will-O-Wisp. And obviously, you kind of see where you need to be, but your ultimate doesn't have a very long range without the talents. So uh, it's tricky positioning for that as well. Epileptic Kid wanted to go for that right show. I mean, that's a tanky target, and he has got some backup as well. Epileptic Kid has to be careful. But he has a spirit out, so he's fine. In the meantime, on the bottom lane, a little bit of uh, activity happening there as well. Afterlife able looks to run like... away, getting drained, but no. Nope. I think they tried to scythe for uh, DM. By the looks of it, um, that's not really the target you want to scythe, though. Well, in some ways, it is. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> but, uh, sure. Obviously, yes. that was double ults too. That was Laguna and Scythe. They weren't able to bring him down. Boy, that's uh, that hurts. And it uh, looks like Spirit was a base planter, by the way. So that's nice. I like that. That definitely comes back to that idea of just like the Lena's ability to like go for these ganks. Just like how important the snowballing is. Like instantly Aragon's up top. He has the faded brooch though, which is nice because before that Yules, you at least need something to close some gaps. But it's an Ember, so not gonna be able to get that kill for free. Nope. But yeah, they they feel the need to pressure and to continue on uh, with uh, with setting the tempo. But it looks like VP Prodigy is, is kind of doing the same thing, but they yeah. do it while avoiding Team Spirit. Sets are so good. Like, this hero is just amazing in some drafts. I mean, like, he's, how many offlaners are that good at pushing towers anymore? I feel like they all just get nerfed, and then this guy just walks up, presses retaliate, and absolutely blows it up. Yeah. Radiance middle tower. But you do have to build up the stacks. That's annoying. Right? Yes. Well, they don't come for free. <laughs> well, you just walk into another tower. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I mean, the towers are your friend as a centaur. That is definitely true. Uh, especially later on, you're super tanky and you can take those towers. But tier 1 towers are more your friends than tier 2 towers. Because I do find that the tier 2 and tier 3s hurt a little bit too much just stand there and tank them. How did Afterlife just get down here? Am I missing? He walked. And uh, he kind of tape you out, but he can't interrupt it by the M. Is there enough damage? Or are they trying to... Uh, uh, well, I think they got enough damage to take him down. Maybe not. They're looking for him. They know he cannot TP out. He keeps healing up. There is a Razor coming as well to help out, but he's very far away. No help coming for uh, Afterlife, though, and he'll drop. And actually, the Razor never even showed up, so... It's a, a long walk to uh, then see one creep wave. They run away. They scan him in the tree line, too, which was really nice. I'm surprised they actually got there in time. And now they still have Stampede to like kind of make their way back in here. Double D ward action here from Misha, though. He's getting some of this uh, vision control knocked out. There's another sentry he hit, in fact. Oh, quite value there? there. So we have 2k gold in favor of VP Prodigy. They are still... They have the most kill potential, which is a little weird to, for me to say because the, the Lina and the Necrophos are such a good tag team as well. But I find that the... Well, because the kills are in favor of BP Prodigy and we see how effective they are to blow people up, especially with uh, with the curse from the Witch Doctor, they just feel like they can do more. Yeah, they really do. I, I think another problem is that like this Radiant side bristle is a lot worse than the Dire side. Because when you're Dire, it's a lot easier to like force yourself to control this area. Whereas Radiant, you can like never farm these Ancients. So Dire gets like two Ancient Camps and Radiant get like half of one. Oh, smoke him from Spirit. I just, I mean, that's that's the typical, um, you know, cast a curse. It's been a while since I did that one. <laughs> <laughs> Saying spirit can't do anything and instantly go for a smoke to do something. Well, they, they didn't do anything. Do anything. So no, they didn't. <laughs> but they did. You were smoke. right. They did something. Uh, but no, they didn't really find they, anybody. They did that. nothing. While well, VP Prodigy continue to farm and secure their lead. That's true. That's true. They have a little bit more map control as well compared to Spirit. I find so they have more farm overall to a takedown. Actually, now Aragon is. Taking that ancient stack that you were talking about. And they're waiting on the high ground. They, they want someone to walk up that high ground. Walk up to their triangle and try to farm. They're just looking for a pickup, looking for a kill. But I think that that is something BP Prodigy is aware of. Considering nobody comes to defend that tier on top. They do end up going in on the middle. They find the Razor, oh, but sick. it's not enough. Again, Laguna Blade 
And the scythe, not enough to kill FN, and it is Lena that dies, it is Immersion that dies. So, he and didn't panic uh, with the Stampede, because he could have Stampeded the second he saw, like, the Necrophos was really close to the Razor, but if you do that, the Necro's still going to get off the Scythe. So instead, he waited until yeah. the Scythe was locked down. They got off the Laguna, but there was so much follow-up damage that they could have gotten, but they couldn't quite reach it in time because the Stampede came out instantly after the Scythe ended. Yeah. So, nice play there from DM to secure his core's survival. And again, ruin this Lena's time, and once more, kind of harken back to why this uh, hero, we don't get to see her too much. Yeah, yeah. it just feels because they, he can't, like he's trying and he, we feel him trying. Oh, afterlife, he's getting silenced up. Is there enough damage to take him out with epileptic kit there as well? Yes, there is. Immersion there, too late to do anything. But yeah, we could tell that, Immer that, uh, that Team Spirit and that Aragorn is trying to be active and trying to, to help out and get kills and stuff, but it just feels extra painful when they don't get it. Yeah, we talked a lot about the like the reactivity of the radiant heroes in terms of uh, engagements and, and the way they can like spread themselves during team fights. But that's the kind of the beauty of the the Centaur War Runner is that you don't even have to look at all the other heroes. It's just yeah. one guy. You just press R. <laughs> Very high skill. Easy hero. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked about it, how the lineup for VP Prodigy was a little bit easier to execute. So, you know, especially Centaur, press R. And sometimes when you're taking down towers, you press to retaliate. You know that too. Oh, well, they're back at it again. Uh, yeah. Cooldowns, I mean, it's almost back, right? Yeah, it's like seven seconds until they have the Stampede again, 20 until the Storm. So it's, it's not like you're really capitalizing on anything by just rushing in again. It kind of feels like you're just running into the brick wall once more. They're going to try and commit like to this bottom to? tier one. I think they're trying to take this area. I think, I think that's what they want. Like, they're just shoving themselves in here to try and dominate uh, by taking these towers and try and control yeah. the Ancients. Because there's not a lot of Roshan threat this game either from the Dire. It's not like they have this like big Rosh hero, so they don't have to be too worried about like leasing this space over to the enemy. It feels like this is actually the more valuable part of the map, uh, which is kind of unusual in Dota because usually it's Rosh, right? Yeah. But do you feel like Team Spirit needs to make these movements? Like, do you like are they on the timer? I like like what would their heroes be doing right now? I guess is the question, right? Like they have heroes that they want to be scything people, they want to be Lagunaing people. And Bristol, yeah. sure, he wants to be like hitting creep waves and stuff, but like they kind of feel like they need this interaction of the enemy team to be getting the value of their heroes right now. I don't think you want to be like passively farming, so they do need okay. to make these actions. I don't know if they need to be like these specific actions, but they definitely need to be doing <laughs> something that is crossing the river. I mean, probably they don't need to make these specific actions because they haven't been really successful, so they should do something different uh, instead. Uh, the Rasho is going to get oh, some man. help from Immersion, but that, that's that five heroes good. farming the middle lane on the side of Team Spirit. The lack of the direct stun is very frustrating versus the Ember. Like, it's just something that is targeted and simple. They, they don't really have that. Uh, they got to use Alina, but you can always jump out to your spirit, right? After you. Yeah. Will of Wisp, you can get out of that too. They need, a, they need an Orchid or something. Like, that's the only thing, right? Uh, either that or like the pole, like the perfect pole or something. But again, still kind of hard to do. Yeah. Well, they're gonna they're gonna have some time to uh, to get their items because it doesn't look like they're fighting these fights. That uh, we do have, uh, I mean, VP Prodigy at some point will probably want to get some more fighting going as well. Although they don't feel the pressure yet, like they are pretty comfortable late game. They do have their eyes up on the Bristleback. It is a tanky hero. They're gonna go for it though. They got him cursed up. In comes the Glimmer Cape from Misha. That was a death ward without vision. So All right. It's just a taunt, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we're not looking at the ultimate that went on cooldown. It definitely was the taunt. Yeah. Sorry, right, Glimmer uh, Cape revealed. Yes. Uh. A lack of detection outed. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that's going to happen again, though. No worries. Yeah, that's like, that's like one of those right. mistakes. Like, it will happen once, and yeah. then it won't happen ever again. And it was like a bounty kill. It's it's fine. Oh, all right. BKB into the smoke here, I think. And we're good to go. Is that a full glimmer? Or is that just a... Yeah, full glimmer now for the Witch Doctor, too. Ah, I mean, I'm nice. fine with smoking without uh, Death Ward. I think you just go. Yeah, I agree. I feel like they One have thing... the edge at the moment anyway. Yeah, they have no vision uh, across the river. Because they, they know that Team Spirit have just been ramming into this area. So this vision has worked out fantastically well. All those incursions were seen. 
But now they're going to go through and try and get some vision, try and get a quick pick here. Yeah, if and they can catch Ergon, free. Opa, they, yeah, that is an easy kill there. That's a little overkill, even, if you will. They're not going to catch anybody else, so everybody realizes to get the, the hell out of there. Maybe push out the wave a little bit if you're the bristleback, but instant rainbow of TPs <laughs> in the bottom lane. They really want to take down Naracho. Let's see, the Stampede also, they find him. No Glimmer Cable, keep him safe. He is uh, cursed up, silenced up. Sure, they killed off Keeper of Life on the side as well, but they will get their main target. Naracho. Wow, I love Sims that rotation. Respect. Crazy. Everybody, <laughs> they just yeah. stampede the wish. Sorry. Poor Coddle tries to throw his life away to glimmer his uh, bristle, and he still just that died. was so noble. <laughs> like you can live, and I shall die. And then still they place a sentry this time round. It was true love, though. They went together. Absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, it's uh, not really a beautiful game for them because it's slowly creeping up to 14 kills to three. Not uh -huh. ideal would be how one would probably describe this if they were on it's Team true. Spirit the high, you know, trying to keep the, the morale high. I mean, it, if you're looking at, like, you just joined the, the game, right? And you see, let's 3 to 14, 8k gold and VP Prodigy's I closed the favorite. tab. Yeah, it feels like a, like a stump, but, or rather, it looks like a stump, but it doesn't really feel like a stump. You know what I mean? I mean, the only reason it doesn't feel like a stump is because VP Prodigy just haven't had to do anything. Oh, I knocked to the low ground. No glimmer cable. Keep him safe. The dust is already out, and there should be enough damage to take him out. But he has gone back up. DM jumping in with the stun on immersion. Rooted as well. He can't get himself out. It is Ayn that dies for now. But look at the return kills. Nice kill on the bristleback. They will lose FN though with that will o' wisp and Aragon helping out as well. Skyrath. Trying to run, getting chased. The chase potential is pretty decent as well, and he will get the Reaper side. Okay, so they tried the combo on the center. Whoop! Amber Spear still around. Epileptic Kid trying to uh, cut the wave there. He's getting chased. Is, does he have another spirit available? He does. He's got, he doesn't have any planted though. I don't think, right? Oh, I know he does. Okay. He does. He does. He's out. He's out. But they tried that combo with the Reaper Scythe and Laguna Blade on the center. It didn't work. They tried it on FN's Razor. It didn't work. They finally found their target. Do it on the Skyrath mage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the squishiest of them all. But they that got him. So. That was three for one. And it cost you your bristle, sure. But uh, trying to get these other heroes moving is very important right now. They are yep. jumping in, though. Oh, that four step. Uh, stampede there as well. Nice stun. Doesn't hit, though. At DM realizes he messed up. He's trying to teleport out. He will be able to do so with Emergent teleporting in. Is the chase still going to be successful? I don't think so. Everybody out in the set of people project. But I agree, if you're able to trade at all while being behind, the trade is actually in your favor. Oh, they're going to cut the lead a little bit. But that might just reinforce uh, VP Project to say, like, okay, well, that was uh, us playing a little aggressive. I don't know why oh, we did that. Might as well just go back to farming on our side of the river. No, no, no. Casa Curse right there. They smoked up. They're, gonna, they're not done. They, they, they have unfinished business. Their cooldowns are a little easier to punish, too, because they're just a little bit longer, right? That extra, like, yeah. 30 seconds or so in comparison with the Scythe and the uh, the Will-O-Wisp, so... Yeah, the only thing they're lacking right now is the Stampede. Radiant structure. can't really find anybody, though. It looks like Team Spirit is very well aware that something is amiss. Oh, they have they the Atos. Find immersion. <laughs> immersion is able to ball out. the slowest roll. <laughs> it worked, though. It worked. Now the chase is on. Maybe for uh, Dairacho, he's looking for for something. Yep, they want to go for the Centaur. This is a tricky target to go on, but maybe they feel like they have the damage. Income save with the help. What's in a name? Nice Will-O-Wisp up on three, though, and the Sempede not available to get out. So Ayn and Save will be in a world of trouble right there. The Reaper side doesn't kill off the Witch Doctor, but it doesn't really matter with the Ergol's right clicks coming through. So they do kill off both supports, but those both supports make sure that DM can get out safe. They did oh, wow. trade quite a bit of pressure though. The Ember Spirit yeah. was in the bottom, and then the Razor was in mid, also with a catapult wave too. So even though they got both supports, it looks like counting Tower Gold and everything, it's actually still going to be in VP Prodigy's favor as it, yeah. it chicks, goes up to uh, 7k instead of 6k. Oh dear. A lot of pings. Oh, got a Mindbreaker too. Nice. Do they have, uh, he's the got his, what, big BKB? Yeah, he still has 9 seconds, okay. 
Well, it's back to uh, to farming for a little while, or perhaps back to protecting Dairacho. Five heroes of spirit are in their own jungle. Feels like their uh, their space is is kind of limited at the moment. Their space to farm, that is. And they gotta hey, stay this... fairly close together as well. Yeah, they they need like their little buddy next to them, either in this glimmer or in the uh, the will o' wisp when that's available. They yeah. also need to finish out these uh, neutral items. Both teams do. The orb of destruction now as well for DM. Maybe hand that over that... to Epileptic Kid. And we haven't really talked too much about the neutral items. Any team in particular that you feel like that won the neutral items? I like that both teams have a Philosopher's Stone. You know, that's a, that's an even trade, I find. It's a good feel good. So far, the Tier 3s look pretty heavily in favor of Vivi Prodigy, I would say. They got uh, the Quiver, the Mindbreaker, and the Orb. And yeah. the, the Orb's just like so good on Ember, right? Because you're applying the debuff to everyone who you slight. So it's not even just like you that it's helping out. You have this uh, Razor who is this physical damage ulti that you're also jacking up with that. He's just going to get right on top of Ergon here. Well, in the meantime, also Ayn does get a cask out. The Stampede oh, also to put Ayn in trouble and maybe to try and chase down Ergon, but they couldn't anymore. So he had a bottled illusion rune. <laughs> That's like the only way he could play that far up or else he'd have to like Yules himself and then he probably would have got followed up on by the Atos. I feel like the, there's a lot more play around the Roche pit. We said earlier that, you know, these teams don't really have your typical Roshan lineup. But it is getting to that point where the Roshan could prove to be the edge for a fight that you need. Yeah, it's getting to the point where, like, now it doesn't matter if you have this, like, dedicated Roche hero. Once it's past, like, 25 minutes, everyone kind of has enough, like, general damage on their heroes that they can play there. So, time to say, figuring out who's got the better Roche fight. Uh, Will-O-Wisp is one of these big spells now, especially, like, with how popular Coddle is. I think he's, like, the highest pick ban in this whole tournament so far. It's just, he's, uh, he's constantly at these Roche fights. And, of course, the Will-O-Wisp is uh, this big one of, like, you don't really want to drop it unless it's, like, the full commitment of the Roche. So you got to be sure that yep. this is the last one. You can't let them leave. And, oh, man, that was half his HP. Oh, uh, yeah, he did. I mean, that wasn't like that. That's a bit worrying, actually. That's, like, feeling like time for a Bracer territory for me. I mean, it's more like you, you hit up that bristle like, yo, you see that craggy coat, dude? Do you really need that? Can you fit a <laughs> yeah. craggy coat over those spikes? Oh, this bristle, by the way, the bristle back. Yeah, that craggy coat is not saving you from all that magical damage coming through from the Skywrath as well. And they get immersion on the top. So that's three heroes just like that. Like, do you go for Roche or do you just go for the tier two and maybe even the tier three? See if you can force yeah. out a bye-bye. Probably tier two and then Roche, I would think. Seems pretty safe to me. Yeah. It takes so long to get to Roche now. Like, when you control the outpost like that and you take this tier two. But yep. it looks like the wave was a bit delayed here. So that's going to slow them down. Yep. Sad times. I must say, though, that was, like, that that makes me a little bit worried for how this game is going to end. Because they do need to save your body system on Team Spirit. And they d didn't really do that there. And then you have one person dying. And then another person will die. And it's not really a fight. It's more like, oh, sh Oh shoot, you know, we're on the wrong place, wrong time, and suddenly we lost the game. That's a little that's a little worrisome. I think part of it is just that like their whole strategy feels like it had to be centered around this bristle and he's just not huge enough. Like he, it's like a Sven where if you're not like two or three K ahead, you're just you don't really feel that strong on the hero. And So what uh, does he need to have? Like is there an item that will say, Okay, you know, once he finishes his BKV that he's building towards, then he'll be that power that Team Spirit needs. I mean, it's it's kind of more like it's not really an item by item thing. It's more of just a relative thing of just like this hero is just all about Radiant being bigger than the other team <laughs> and just like, you know, you just can't fight them. Right. So if they ever get ahead, if they're just like constantly saying that one item ahead of you, it just feels harder and harder to play your hero. Like, uh, I do like that he's going oh. in here for this uh, ancient sack and bounty room, though. They know Die that this Bristleback is here and they find him again with the Mystic Flare and the curse. Yeah, I mean, if he had a BKB, he would have lived. Well, now's a good time that to tip is... him because he stacked his, your Ancients yeah. for you. Oh, they're not done yet. Immersion was close by. That's I've, I've, I've discovered the body system, at least. Immersion is normally close <laughs> to the Bristleback, which has not really helped to save his life, <laughs> unfortunately. But that ward again that you pointed out earlier, once again, make sure that VP Prodigy is like, oh, shoot, that's a Bristleback on our side. We can kill him. And they do. And it's, it's just coordination and easy kills. Stay away from our ancients. <laughs> yep. like all it is over and over. Definitely. But yeah. Um, yeah. They're not going to be able to fight this. No chance there. And with the AC, they even got a dragon scale in there too. Roche feeling the burn. They're not taking it very fast though, but I guess 
It's too late anyway, as you said, it's a long way to the Roche pit. Yeah, but what about this Spirit Vessel degen of 20% really hurting Roche's ability here? We got yeah. new tactics versus the Roche. That's true. New strategy is being formed. All right, with the Aegis, how confident do you feel VP Prodigy is uh, make a push for it? It should be a pretty easy tier three minimum, if not, I would guess full set of racks, frankly. Unless they okay. just, you know, it's, eh, there's a high ground possibility. They have this really annoying lineup for the uh, single hero deletion, which can be a, kind of frustrating because it's like, it's an 11K lead, but if you just yeah. scythe Lagoon to someone, then maybe you just drop, you know, 15K off their team. So then, well, if, we've uh, seen a couple of scythe Lagunas. I am not too confident in the killing ability from that. It was a big if. All right. If was the <laughs> key word. Okay. That's, uh, that's we do have everybody to look defend it too, too. Hmm? That's what you gotta look for, is uh, the big yes. single kill. Is Because is that really where this game is at the moment, where Team Spirit is so far behind that they have to rely on those ifs? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't really see a point where they ever feel like they're gonna be ahead again. I just feel like nothing on their team is feeling better without this Bristleback being huge. It's like, how can you really see Alina like mopping up an entire fight by herself, like an Ember can or a Razor can? Like, they just don't really have the heroes for it. Well, smoke so it's just coming out. Sad. Looking for target. Razor already in there. Stampede as well, trying to get away. They kill off the courier of the Razor and take the Aegis as well. Nice cast, though, in the meantime. Bristleback. He looks to be a dead one. The will o not able to help out, and that is a lot of damage coming through from the Keeper of the Light, but it is not enough anymore to save the Bristleback. I think with the Bristleback dead, even with the trade being in favor of Spirit number-wise, I still, I think you're still happy with that as VP Prodigy. Even, I guess you lose the ages as well. Yeah, it, it would give me some second thoughts. I'd be like, oh, well, this wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, because uh, that, that Coddle ult, man, it just it ruins everything. It is so frustrating to play against. Like, your Razor died. His first death went by very quickly. Like, the Aegis, it did not feel like there was an Aegis on that first go. I mean, they played it super aggressive, though. He just, like, ran in. Yeah. I guess he was trying to force the, the Will-O-Wisp early, which he kind of did, but it was still a, a difficult engagement. And it wasn't the best terrain, either, it feels like, for the fight. However, they did leave the entire creep wave, just keep hitting that Tier 2 tower for some reason. So, they still got a lot of value out of that. I mean, silver linings. That's nice. But they didn't take the tier 2 tower. And we thought the Aegis was going to be able to get a tier 3 tower for a Prodigy. Didn't even take the tier 2. So now they got to wait again until the next Roche. <laughs> well, maybe not. Depends on uh, how many pickoffs they can get with this uh, Aghanim Scepter on Epileptic Kid. Yeah. You feel like that's going to up the tempo for his play a lot? Well, at this point, it's Team Spirit. Like, the way that we're kind of framing their, their team and how the bristles behind, you have to, like, augment your game plan into something else. And currently, the only option is a lot of split pushing to try and keep this pressure off your base and uh, kind of release some valves. And the Aghanim Scepter is super good versus that because, like, just the range is kind of stupid. Does look like Team Spirit wants to make a move. Might position. want to move down to their Tier 3 bottom, though. I mean, yeah, they need to, like, someone does, needs to. But they, they just want to take control out of their triangle, of the triangle, and hope that someone walks up high ground to, to die? BP Prodigy is kind of aware of what's happening, though, even though they don't have vision of that high ground. It's kind of the only place at the moment that they could be. It's <laughs> such the a jungle. funny position. <laughs> the whole radio team just chilling up here while their, their buildings are being hit, but... Maybe again, kind of this like desperation measure. Plus, it is bounty timing, so trying to get those all sorted for themselves. See if they can make it to tier four, perhaps. Another five minutes. Try and even out the game a bit with some more neutral items. Yeah. Could say the same about VP Prodigy, though. They might just be thinking, like, okay, well, five minutes will mean more neutral items, and next Roche will almost certainly be up by then. So, why don't we just wait for that? Oh, God, he's so slippery on that Ember. He doesn't leave any possibility of death. But there's still not a good way to lock him down, right? Am I missing something? Like there's well, even if he just left it for like half a second, at least like I don't know. There's something, <laughs> but he, he but doesn't even give him the cool, option. He can get out. Yeah, he's got the BKB, so he should yeah. be fine too, no matter what happens. The only theoretical thing would be like some sort of a Necrophos play, like an Invis Rune or something, if he relaxes yeah. too much. 
well, got to get lucky with the runes for that and more ifs added to the pile of Team Spirit. While everybody is still watching their run show far from the high ground, seems to be their preferred place. And all the while, VP Prodigy just keeping the pressure on, keeping the waves pushed on the middle lane, on the bottom lane, and having full control over the Radiant jungle. Yeah, full pressure bottom is the, the best case scenario because that's the thing that just gives you Roche really easily when you're dire. You just want to like, make sure that you can at least see one hero having to uh, push back this bottom wave. They left, uh, they left their place. They left their high ground to farm bottom. Double catapult waves were uh, too tempting. Yeah. Does make sure that uh, VP Prodigy is changing from bottom lane to mid lane. Doesn't really matter to them. They'll continue farming. We're at a we're at an impasse, as they call it, Trent. It seems mm. like both teams are not really looking for fights, unless the enemy team messes up. Both both teams, yeah, both teams are looking for that bad fight from their opponent. They're just yeah. they're just looking to capitalize on some like someone just getting bored, basically, and be yeah. like, nah, we can kill them. You know, the, the who Owen loses their patience first? Owen, I think is the right answer. That's every <laughs> single game heard it way too many times in this uh, game it's probably i feel like it's the necrophos because he's like the lowest of the cores and he's got this scythe and he's like yo guys come on one laguna they're just dead that's who i would yeah, blame he just wants to fight i would say also ergon because he also wants to wants to fight like he wants to set the tempo high. that's his hero that's every hero that he plays is one of those tempo setters Ooh, yeah do have a smoke coming from pp prodigy though maybe they can kill off the necrophos it is necrophos and bristle that are closest by the only one far away is Aragon, actually, at the moment. You think they can blow up a bristle like that? They're gonna try. They probably think the the Coddle's like way closer, I would guess, or something. Cause yeah, yeah he he probably could have died there, but you, they probably thought they were like smoked right behind him or something, yeah. kind of like down on that low ground. By the mm -hmm. way, he was standing. They're going back in though. Yeah, that is uh this time with the smoke already gone. They're looking uh, for that pickup. They find that Coddle. He did get the Will-O-Wisp out, but that's being killed off now as well. Nice cast between the Bristle and the Necrophos as well. Can't really do that much immersion. He'll be the target first. VP Prodigy then move on to their next target, perhaps. Or, yeah, their next target is going to be Aragon. He was on the side. He was able to kill off the Witch Doctor, but will now be the target of VP Prodigy's hatred as they move from one target to the next. Get the Bristle back as well, as if it's nothing. Two heroes left alive because the Coddle bought back. Misha now the only one left standing after buying back. And his tier 3 tower under attack. Bright side, the wave is all the way at the river, so that will hold them off for a little bit longer. But that was a disaster of a fight for yeah. Team Spirit. That's the best feeling when you're playing support and one of their big cores just targets you the entire fight, doesn't really stop you doing what you were doing anyway, and then, yep. like, sure, you die, but then they just get blown up by your three heroes that are mopping up the rest of the fight. It's just perfect play there on the side of EP Prodigy, no real concerns. Dropping the call was pretty rough. He, like, he knew he had to because he wouldn't be able to get back into, like, the secondary part of the fight fast enough, but yeah. that thing just died right away. Yeah, the supports just could hit it and they didn't, they didn't, they weren't really uh, slowed down by that. In the meantime, Immersion jumping forward. They already took the rack. Silence up there on Epileptic Kid, but he has the Echo Shell. He's fine for now. And they might actually dive a little bit too far. Epileptic Kid still in very deep. Will jump himself out just like, uh, well, DM was trying to teleport out, but. Uh, oh, the, the sidestep, though. He did have the sidestep, making sure that Immersion is in a world of hate there from uh, VP Prodigy. Uh, that's. Uh, Unfortunate for him, but that is super well played by the M who was gonna live because he's super tanky anyway. That that's a that's a tip. That was the best and tip the, of the game. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, tip it back. A person realizes like, oh yeah. That was pretty Those good. are the type of interactions that I'm like, yes. Good Dota being played here. That's you know, there's just presence of mind to not go all hands off the keyboard when you're trying to teleport out, but sidestep when needed. Uh, and they take one lane of racks, uh well half lane, if you will. But the most important one. Do you feel like that's enough of that fight? Phoebe Prodigy should be happy with that, or could they have gotten more? Ah, you're fine. I mean, this, this game is it's, it's a slow burn to the victory. Yeah. Everything one step at a time. Get your ages, get your cheese, get your next round of neutral items. Just don't feed. That's pretty much all you have to worry about right now. If you're raiding right now, sure, you can't contest Roche, but you should definitely be hitting neutral creeps. I guess they're going to try and contest Roche. I don't really see. Uh, a likelihood. Oh, oh, Amber's in. 
Yeah, they, they want to fight this. Ayn is going to be the first target, but he gets a Casco perfectly up on both Bristle and Immersion, and they'll die straight off the bat. And in the meantime, in the back lines, FN made sure that Bristleback, or sorry, <laughs> well, oh, Cobble dies as well. There you go. There it uh, is. That was terrible for Team Spirit. That cast bounce was uh, the support dream there for Ayn. And that is it. That's GG. That was the nail in the coffin and then some. Oh, stopped. Oi. Man, DM I mean, was, was really was hitting the BMs this game. Uh, kind of. Kind of. It was, it maybe, yeah, I, 